at 11 on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45, 4th of July fireworks. We'll show you some of the best shows around the state. Plus the holiday hurricane cleanup continues along the coast as Arthur heads north. And the White House welcomes new citizens. Several immigrant military members become Americans. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. And thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. Those stories are coming right up, but first tonight, meteorologist Doug Lindsay here with the first check of that weather on the ones forecast. And Doug, it was such a great day to be outside for the fourth. Yeah, it was just about as perfect as you could ask for. Our big hurricane, Arthur, of course, lifting away. And look how clear it is out there. It was a perfect day for all of your outdoor plans and, of course, for all the fireworks displays, too. And that's all thanks to high pressure. As the hurricane continues to lift away, high pressure is building in, sets us up for a gorgeous next couple of days, of course, the rest of our holiday weekend. In fact, tonight, with a clear sky, we're down to 59 degrees. And Saturday, with all the sunshine, 83 and low humidity. Looks great. We'll look at the rest of the holiday weekend and your seven-day forecast in just a few minutes. <laughs> It was a great end to the 4th of July in Greensboro. Hundreds of people were treated to the Gate City Fireworks Spectacular at the White Oak Amphitheater earlier this evening. The fireworks lasted for about half an hour and were accompanied by the Philharmonia of Greensboro. And here's a quick look at the show in Wilmington. Thousands of people got together for the Battleship Blast. It takes place at the Battleship North Carolina every year right on the riverfront. And more than 10,000 people filled Uptown Charlotte for a fireworks show at BB&T Ballpark. The night's game drew its largest crowd so far this season. Time Warner Cable News reporter Brad Broders has more. For the Brad Broders Time Warner Cable News. People celebrated the 4th all day long at the Fun 4th Festival in Greensboro. The event included a parade that traveled down Green Street and stopped at the Street Festival. Fun 4th is in its 40th year. Even though the event was held in a different location this year, many say that move was a good choice. I think uh, this is a good spot for it. Uh, it's plenty of room, uh, the streets are long and everybody's moving, so I think it's a great spot. There was also a freedom run and walk. And volunteers decorated the graves of our veterans in Colfax today. They marked the graves with American flags at the Smith Grove Baptist Church. The cemetery includes grave sites for a number of veterans, including some from World Wars I and II. There are still more than 1,200 people without power along the coast as a result of Hurricane Arthur. Let's show you Topper 11 video of the damage left along the coast. That is Dare County, and you can see there is flooding in the streets and some damage to Highway 12. At the height of the storm, about 20 to nearly 30 foot waves were reported off Hatteras Island. That caused sand and water to wash out part of the highway. The National Hurricane Center said Arthur is the earliest hurricane to hit the state in a season since records began back in 1851. Now here's a look at what Arthur left behind in Nags Head. The Department of Transportation is out assessing all of the roads and making the necessary repairs. They're asking people in the area to avoid the roads, if possible, until they can fix any damage. Moorhead City and Atlantic Beach also saw hurricane force winds and heavy rain when Arthur made landfall last night. Time Warner Cable News reporter Amanda Wilcox has an update. Atlantic Beach, Amanda Wilcox, Time Warner Cable News. The highest reported wind gust for the Atlantic Beach area hit 87 miles an hour. At Fort Macon, Cape Lookout saw winds of more than 100 miles an hour. And this is what the storm looked like from outer space, a little more peaceful than down here on the ground. The U.S. National Hurricane Center in Miami said it made landfall around 1115 last night as a Category 2 hurricane. Coming up here at 11 o'clock, one North Carolina man faces Hurricane Arthur head on as he waded out the storm 30 miles off the coast in a lighthouse. I'm meteorologist Doug Lindsay. Arthur continuing to pull away. High pressure is building in, setting us up for a gorgeous finish to our holiday weekend. Details coming up in your Weather on the Ones forecast. And by Wednesday, we'll start getting into those afternoon and evening storms. And that is your Weather on the Ones forecast. Sharon, back to you. Well, parts of Gaston County were hit hard by an overnight storm. A couple of mobile homes were destroyed in Cherryville when a tree fell on them. The storm also damaged a car wash and knocked down power lines in the area. 
A North Carolina man and his family waited out Hurricane Arthur 30 miles off the coast in the middle of the Atlantic. The family from Mint Hill bought the frying pan lighthouse two years ago and turned it into a bed and breakfast. They stayed out there during the storm and took video of it as it moved by. Elise Roberts shows us more. Time Warner Cable News. And sports is next here on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. And later, a lumber yard fire flares back up this morning after firefighters thought they had it put out. That's coming up in our Carolina Minute. Jason Brown joins us now with Look of Sports. And we know the weather has really been the big story the last couple of days, and it's affecting the sports world too, Jason. Yeah, it really has, although I don't know if this is, this actually really wasn't ran. Grand Slam title, he already has the record, but he would just add to it with number 18. That is certainly impressive. Yeah, and that is Look at Sports on this 4th of July. Hey, Sharon. We definitely have some familiar faces uh, in the men's final at Wimbledon, Jason. Not on the women's side, however, which takes place tomorrow, but certainly on the men's side, indeed. All right. Thanks, Jason. More news after sure. this break here on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. And if you play, get your tickets out. Your live North Carolina Education Lottery drawing is coming up in just about one minute. Stay with us. Now here's tonight's Carolina Minute. The National Weather Service confirms an EF1 tornado touched down in Duplin County last night. Winds as strong as 100 miles per hour hit just before 9 o'clock. Meteorologists say the storm was a result of Hurricane Arthur. It caused damage to trees and a few homes, but luckily no major injuries. Firefighters are still investigating the cause of a fire at a lumber yard in Statesville. Six fire stations responded to the fire at the Godfrey Lumber Yard last night. The fire reignited early this morning and crews came back to put it out for good. No one was injured. Two people are in the hospital after a wreck in Johnston County. This happened around 2.30 yesterday afternoon on I-95 and it shut down the interstate for a while. Highway Patrol troopers say a driver heading south lost control in the rain and hit a tree. The driver was pinned and had to be airlifted to wake men. These stories are more available anytime on Time Warner Cable News. America welcomed a number of new citizens today. In what's become a White House tradition, the president watched as several immigrant members of the military and some spouses were sworn in as U.S. citizens. The president used the ceremony as a push for immigration reform. If we want to keep attracting the best and the brightest from beyond our shores, we're going to have to fix our immigration system, which is broken, and pass common sense immigration reform. We shouldn't be making it harder for the best and the brightest to come here and create jobs here and grow our economy here. We should be making it easier. Old Salem Museums and Gardens hosted its own naturalization ceremony today. 30 countries were represented in Winston-Salem. This is the fourth year Old Salem hosted the ceremony. Mooresville, North Carolina is known as Race City, USA, but a second title is spreading the 4th of July, Redneck Hollywood. Time Warner Cable News reporter Vanessa Leon explains. Next week, so enjoy this holiday weekend and enjoy it safely, folks. We'll see you next week. And finally, here on this 4th, we have to update you on this story. Joey Chestnut defends his title as the winner of the 2014 Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. And Jaws ate 61 hot dogs in just 10 minutes, falling well short of his record 69 that he set last year. He still easily beat the second place finisher by five dogs. This is the eighth win for Chestnut, but this one may stand out. Before the competition, he proposed to his girlfriend. How could you resist all that? She did say yes. Congratulations to him. And that's our time. Thank you for joining us. Jimmy Come Alive is next. Time Warner Cable News is available around the clock and on your schedule. Have a great weekend.